Happy New Year. Happy New Year, guys. Uh, Jesus is coming. He is coming soon. The Lord Jesus is coming so soon, guys. He didn't come in Hanukkah of 2019, but he's coming soon still, guys. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. He's coming. We're supposed to be watching for the Lord and when he comes. It says there's a crown of righteousness laid up for all those uh, that loves his appearing. And watching for him, the Bible says. And we, after you get saved, you need to try to, the best you can, try to turn for your known sins. And, uh, and uh, you know, I make mistakes in sin all the time. And I, uh, we need, when we do make mistakes in sin, we need to repent of our sins. But we need to pray the Lord tells us anything else we need to change in our uh, walk with the Lord Jesus or turn from so we can do that. And, Pray he tells us anything we need to change in our walk with Jesus or, or turn from. And then when we do make mistakes of sin, which I do all the time, I'm no better than anybody else. I'm a, I'm a sinner. And I'm more, I, I pray Jesus and my Father, Daddy God, Yahweh forgives me. Uh, and because I'm, I pray, I pray uh, Jesus and Daddy God, Yahweh has mercy on me for I'm a horrible sinner. And I am. And we are, and we all fall short of the glory of God. It's only by our faith in Jesus and what he done for us on the cross of Calvary to, to save us from our sins that we can be found worthy to go with Jesus and Jesus in the rapture and, and to go to heaven. But we do need to turn, try to turn from all sins, and when we do sin, we need to repent of our sins. And did y'all see this about uh, this is the day of peace? Uh, today, January is January 1st. Um, so it's January 1st, 2020 today, starting a new year. And uh, this is the day of the 53rd World Day of Peace. See right there. The 53rd World Day of Peace will be observed on January 1st, 2020. Pope, and up here, Pope Francis 2020 World Peace Day message. And this was yesterday, December 31st. And then going there, Pope Francis 2020 World Peace Day message published on 12 December is entitled Peace as a Journey of Hope. Dialogue, reconciliation, and ecological conversion. And then right now here he talks. Uh, the message reads, this is the Pope talk. The message reads, entire nations find it difficult to break free of the chains of exploitation and corruption that fuel hatred and violence. Even today, dignity, physical integrity, freedom, including religious freedom. Listen to that. Even today, dignity, physical integrity, freedom, including rel religious freedom, communal solidarity, and hope in the future are denied to great numbers of men and women, young and old. Did you hear that? Every war is a form of fratricide that destroys the human family's innate vocation to brotherhood. War begins with inability to... war. Listen, listen to this. War often begins with the inability to accept the diversity of others, which then fosters attitudes of... Uh, aggrandizement and domination born of selfishness and pride, hatred, and the desire of caricature, exclude and even destroy the and even destroy the other. Uh, so war often begins with the inability to accept the diversity of others, which is saying that you he said the Pope is saying you should accept everybody, you know, whether they're gay, lesbian or whatever. You know, we as Christians we should love those people, but we need to tell them uh what that 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 they need to try to turn from when all sins especially turn from sins that is you know that's just downright blatant sin against God when they're being uh, you know people were gay and stuff and and uh, practicing and practicing being gay or lesbian and all that we need to warn them of uh, God's judgment and and it's coming. So they try, or so they so hopefully, and we need to pray for them too that they are, they turn from that and get saved by Jesus, so, and that Jesus, that we need to pray the Lord helps them get out of that and turn from that uh, lifestyle. So the Pope also, you notice it's called World Peace Day. Let me show you this, and they come in the guys of peace. He's the he's probably the false prophet. The Pope may be, and Obama's probably the Antichrist. And they come in the guise of peace all the time, but really they bring destruction on the world. And then here it says, World Day of Peace. So a lot of people didn't even know today was the World Day of Peace. Uh, the World Day of Peace is the feast day of the Roman Catholic Church dedicated to universal peace held on January 1st. The solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, Pope 
Paul the Sixth established it in 1967, being inspired by the uh, en encyclical uh, Pacum and Terrace and Pope uh, Pope John the Twenty Third, and with reference to his encyclical uh, Poplorium uh, Progressio, Progressio, I can't see good guys. The day was first observed on January first, 1968. So, remember. So today is the World Day of Peace. As it says. Right there, World Day of Peace, January 1st, 2020. And we know what the Bible says about that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to bell upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Most people don't even know today was the World Day of Peace, I don't think. And then, uh, did you see this? On December 4th, there was a... Uh, uh, 18 small fast boats surrounded the USS Abraham Lincoln. A lot of people were having uh, prophecies. They said the Lord told them that uh, Lincoln will get attacked to start World War III or something like that. Uh, take it to the Lord in prayer yourself. If you hear me tell you anything or anybody tells you anything like that, if it, you know, take it to the Lord in prayer always. Let me show you about that. I have, this happened on December 4th of 2019. The 18 small boats that were spotted by satellite sailing alongside American Navy vessels. What did I say? Of Hormuz early Let me back it up. This man says something about peace and safety. The Hold on, guys. Hold on, man. Bear with me, guys. The 18 small boats right there. Were... The U.S. Japan, uh, the U.S. Japan ready to deploy military forces for peace and stability in the Gulf region. Ha! Huh. The U.S. Japan ready to deploy military forces for peace and stability, peace and safety in the Gulf region. You see that? Uh, well, and I was just talking about it, peace and safety. Uh, World Peace Day today. Isn't that something, January 1st, 2020? That is something, guys, and that had to be the Holy Spirit showing me that. And this video was uh, published yesterday, December 31st, 2019. Let me finish it. It's about the 18 uh, small boat, fast boats surrounding the USS Abraham Lincoln. Spotted by satellite sailing alongside American Navy vessels in the Strait of Hormuz earlier this month were enemy ships, the U.S. military has confirmed. The images taken by commercial satellites on December 4th showed the enemy boats shadowing the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln as well as two other vessels in the carrier strike group, the USS Leyte Gulf and the destroyer USS Farragut. The Strait of Hormuz is a strategic stretch of the Persian Gulf. It serves as the passageway for nearly a third of all oil traded by sea. Tensions in the Gulf have risen since attacks on oil tankers this summer, including off the coast of the United Arab Emirates, and a significant assault on energy facilities in Saudi Arabia. Washington has blamed the enemy, which has denied orchestrating the attacks on global energy infrastructure. In response, the U.S. has deployed thousands of additional military forces to the Middle East, including bombers and air defense personnel, to act as a deterrent against what Washington says is provocative enemy behavior. The Abraham Lincoln Strike Group was deployed to the region in late November in response to the rising tensions. On Sometimes I wonder why... <laughs> I, I do all this work and videos because I want to do it for the Lord and stuff, and carry, I want to carry my cross for Jesus. And uh, but guys, I know so many people don't even watch my whole videos. Did you watch my last video? Watch it all the way to the end. If you didn't go back and watch it all the way to the end, because there's so much information I worked so hard on finding, guys, and putting out there to share with you guys to show you what what time it is. I, mean, I know a lot of my watch watch the people that watch my videos all the time, or a lot of people already know anyways that it's uh, we're at the end, but. Guys, I try to show you some information maybe you don't know about. I work really hard on finding this information to show you. And please watch my videos. So I'll wait to the end if you don't mind, please, guys. I work so hard on it. And most people don't even watch this little part of them and, and they'll comment or whatever. Please, and and people are getting so mean about com leaving comments like most hate. They want, people don't forgive you 
I'm glad we got a God that's forgiven, but they'll say something hateful to me, and if I say anything back just a little bit, and I, I pray the Lord forgave me and stuff, and I ask for forgiveness for not handling it the way the Lord would handle it, but then I, then I would come back and apologize, and they still would, would not forgive me. Even after they said something first really hateful, and I said, or, or I took it as hateful, maybe it wasn't hateful, uh, but I, you know, it sounded like it, and but I told him I was wrong when I shouldn't got aggravated the first and told him I loved him and I forgive him. I'll forgive you right after you say something hateful toward me. Every time I forgive people, even the ones I took off where they can't see my videos no more. But they don't forgive forgive me for nothing or anything I say that they don't agree with or anything like that or anything. If I just ask them why they've been hateful to me, they uh, they get mad or anything, guys. I mean, people, it's it's getting un, unimaginable how people are turning on uh, the watchmen. Like me, I mean, other watchmen for the Lord, I've seen where they said the people were getting so hateful them, they're having to take a lot of people off from because they're trying to start arguments and stuff all the time. Or just, I don't ever get no good comments hardly ever anymore. Very few, just just hateful comments. You're supposed to forgive one another, guys. Didn't didn't Christ say if you don't forgive others, He won't forgive us? I don't know if I showed you this already or not, but um. I just wanted to show you something, if I can find it. Let's see, right here, guys. You know, uh, I don't know if I showed you this already, but if I did, I'm showing you again. This is uh, Matthew 24, 40 through 51. Let's go down to verse 48. I may have showed you this. If I did, I apologize. But, and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall, appoint, shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and shall, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, but, and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, he says, says in his heart, The Lord is not coming right now, and he shall begin to smite his fellow servants, turn against his fellow servants of the Lord, like a lot of people are doing right now, and to eat and drink with the drunken, then basically, uh, if they say in their heart, they're not, uh, the Lord's not coming right now, and start to live worldly and start to uh, come against their fellow servants of Jesus, and uh, eat and drink with the drunken and start live worldly, you know, they, the Lord is saying he, He'll send them to hell. Don't be uh, like that, guys. Love one another. Forgive one another. Don't turn on me. Uh People, like I said, they try to discourage me instead of encourage me here. For lately, used to, I got a lot of encouragement. Now here lately, I can tell I do it for the Lord and for people that's lost to bring them to Christ and not for myself because I don't get no good comments, just hateful and mostly, just very few. And let me show you this, guys. And please forgive me for if I said anything that offended you guys. Will you please forgive me, guys? And please forgive me, Lord, if I didn't handle it, Jesus the way you wouldn't have handled anything I put that they was being said something to me if I didn't handle it back the way you didn't handle it please will you forgive me too Jesus I really I that's whose forgiveness I want if you guys don't forgive me that's uh, that's one thing but I want the Lord's forgiveness for sure please forgive me Jesus for anything I do wrong in my in anything I wrote people or told people in my videos too and show me the right way and I'll correct myself Jesus I pray this in Jesus name uh, now let me show you this wait a minute that's not it Okay, let me show you this, guys. This is a very serious warning of impending danger for all who live on the island of Manhattan, the eastern seaboard, and coastlines around the world. Now, some of you may have watched this video that's on the screen, which is uh, uploaded, posted on my channel. Now, in that experience that the Lord had given to me, I'd explained to you guys that God had placed me in the midst of Manhattan, and this is true. It happened to me. I didn't record it with my voice. I used the, uh, the text-to-speech uh, software to record that vision. But in that vision, God had placed me in the midst of New York and allowed me to experience what's it like when the sea is coming in. There are truly no words to capture what, what's it like, really. It defies description. I tried my best to use words, but it really doesn't even come close to what it really was like. It, it felt like the island was sinking. All of us that was there in Manhattan, we all felt like the, the entire island 
was sinking. Now, what I didn't mention is that the very day, the day after I had that specific vision, the very next night, God had given me a dream because I didn't know what had caused the sea to come in and completely inundate the entire island of Manhattan in that way. I didn't know what, what had caused it. The very next night, God had given me a dream and he showed me this object which was heading towards the earth at a tremendous amount of speed. Now in that very same uh, dream, he gave me a close-up he gave me a very close view, a, a close-up of this object. And when I saw it, it appeared as if it was made somehow. That's I was thinking that it didn't appear natural because of the shape. It was oddly shaped. And I drew a sketch of what it looked like, and you can see it on the screen. Now, it appears that the Spirit of God is at work here because I don't believe in coincidences. Now, a couple of weeks back, there's this other... Uh, video on my channel as well where I speak about this beloved sister on the channel which is called Universal News Media. This sister that is on Universal News Media's channel, uh, God had given me a dream and then one week after that dream he led me to her channel and confirmed that dream, uh, the things that I saw in that dream. I think she, uh, they're talking about the final days as the YouTube channel. Uh, Dr. Claudia Albers. I think it's the final days. I could be wrong. Through her videos and her revelations, uh, her discoveries, the planets that are being obscured behind chemtrails, God had completely confirmed to me that everything that she's speaking of is of the truth and he's behind it because he wants his people to know. He's revealing these things that the enemy has been hiding from uh, God's people in the world. Okay, so after after God had revealed to me that our videos, uh, that these objects are actually there and confirmed to me everything that she's saying, I started watching her uploads like very often, every day. Each time that she'd made an upload, I watched it, you know. So this morning on the 9th of April, she posted an upload and... I started watching it and she, this upload uh, that's on the screen, you know, it's about an asteroid. So I started, you know, I was there looking at it, watching it. And then I see this object because when you watch it for yourself, you're going to see, you know, you can hardly see it. But then at the frame of when it reaches one minute and one second, this object comes up. A little bit clearer so I could I could see it and when I saw it I was amazed again I had that same moment I had when I first when I had first seen a, a video of the objects that I saw in the previous dreams this cone-shaped asteroid object is the exact shape the same object that the Lord had shown me in the dream that was heading towards New York this object is going to hit in the North Atlantic. This is what's going to cause the tsunami. This is what's going to cause the New York City mega tsunami. Because there's actually more than one object. You know, it couldn't be that. It could be uh, the Poseidon nuclear torpedo uh, that Russia has too. It could be this. Very well could be that. Takes the Lord in prayer. I need to do that too. I saw that from previous, from other visions as well. But what I'm talking about here, what I'm focusing on in this particular video is that asteroid or comet or whatever that object is that is going to strike off the coast of New York City in the North Atlantic. So I'm going to go ahead and attach her video to mine and you guys go ahead and check it out and you'll see the object that I'm talking about. And at, when it reaches the frame of one minute and one second, you'll see it a, a bit clearer and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You'll see that it looks kind of like a cone, like kind of, it has this unusual shape. And that's how I recognized it because that's the exact same thing that I saw in the dream. 
Sort of like a mountain burning with fire, you know, like that verse talks about, those verses talk about, you know, it goes in the, into the ocean and uh, makes the ocean turn to blood or, or part of so much of the ocean turn to blood. Go ahead and check it out and, you know, the Lord King Yeshua, bless and keep you. They're getting ready to show that Go to him and pray and ask him for confirmations. This thing is identical to what I saw. They're getting ready to show that video now. Good afternoon. This is Universal News Media. Today is April 8th, 2018. Watch this, guys. Some viewers may recall that on March 24th, a very large, close asteroid was viewed from the southwest facing weather cam located at the military base just outside Anchorage. At first, I thought it was a one time pass by, but I saw it again the next day, March 25th, at approximately the same time of day, around 4 o'clock p.m. After that, the chemtrailing picked up, and I couldn't see the asteroid again until April 1. Six days later, I was able to monitor the asteroid again on April 7th. Chemtrailing has since you been too heavy, but I have four days of comparison over a two-week span of time, and that is enough to provide four similar trajectory paths and four different I'll elevations of the asteroid. For anyone who doesn't like the Bible... Please turn the channel now, rather than leaving a nasty comment. I'm going to read two verses, because I'm going to show where this object is described in the book of Revelations. Revelation chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, King James Version. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon a third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains and of water and the name of the star is called wormwood and the third of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter I'm going to show you with trajectory paths and elevation comparisons over a period of two weeks why I believe that this is the prophetic burning star just described in the Bible passage here is the asteroid on March 24th as it passed by the weather you cam in are. the late afternoon. It is a gigantic rock tumbling through the sky. It comes by each afternoon at about the same time within minutes, which means that it is probably in a medium Earth orbit for now anyway. And for an object to maintain medium Earth orbit, it must be at least 1,243 miles away. So the fact that we can see this tumbling rock so clearly in our sky suggests that it must be very large. Here is what it looked like yesterday, April 7th. The chemtrailing makes it more difficult to see, but I was still able to find this tumbling asteroid in each frame and I placed a dot in the center of the asteroid on each frame, which is 10 minutes. After placing the dots on the asteroid's path every frame, I was able then to draw a line through the dots, defining its path and its rel relative elevation decline over a period of two weeks. I'll be showing those trajectory paths in just a minute. I was also able to get a rough idea of the, of the direction it is traveling, which I'll show in a moment also. We can get a rough idea of the direction this asteroid is traveling around the Earth. We know that the camera is facing southwest at 230 degrees because of this directional map provided by the FAA for this particular weather cam. Knowing that the camera was pointing southwest 230 degrees and viewing the rough trajectory path from the weather cam images, it looked to be traveling in the direction of the yellow arrow on this picture. So basically, from the perspective of Anchorage, Alaska, it appeared to be traveling from the northwest and going southeast around the globe. Here is the path that the asteroid took two weeks ago on March 24th. Watch this, guys. I'm not going to bother showing the March 25th line because it's so close to this one. 
Here is its path eight days later on April 1st. Come closer to Earth every time. And this is what the path looked like yesterday, six days later, on April 7th. This chart shows the March 24th path in red, the April 1st path in green, and the April 7th path in black. And as you can see, it appears to be getting lower to the horizon with each pass around the Earth. Now, let me tell you when this video was published real quick. This was published on April 10th, 2000, April 10th, 2018. So just imagine how much closer it is to the Earth now. I'm not an astronomer, so possibly there is another reason why its path appears to be getting lower in the sky as time goes by. I'm only giving you my observation and how I relate this to Bible prophecy. I believe this asteroid came from the celestial system that we've been seeing parts of lately. Many people ask when the system will make its closest pass to our Earth. A general indication of time is provided in the following screens of text. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Okay, guys, now let me show you another one. If I can find it. Okay, right here it is. Which one did I just show you? Hold on, guys. Bear with me one second, I got it. Okay, here it is. Watch this one too. You know, there's a, a tail uh, behind the uh, Planet X full of debris. that has uh, all kind of millions of asteroids in it that'll hit the Earth probably as we get closer to it, uh, to, to Planet X, or as Planet X gets closer to us. And, uh, it may be what, like I said, it may be what, I think I said that earlier, I'm not sure in this video if I did or not, but it may be what hits uh, the Earth, those asteroids coming down from Planet X's tail with all that debris filled in it, of these asteroids by the millions that may be coming down uh, on the Earth and raining on the Earth, that's when they're uh, passing the Earth's atmosphere on fire, burn on fire and pour down fire on the Earth when the Lord's getting ready to come back or when the Lord Lord's coming back for, to rapture his bride, bride of Christ and for his, uh, as part of his judgments. As he's, as he's come back to rapture his bride and to pour his righteous judgment on this evil world. This is Rap the News. And this is the Maybe. Dragon's Tale of what they call Planet Nibiru. He said this is the Dragon's Tale. You know, it talks about that in the Bible. I was going to tell you something else and I forgot. Oh, and maybe when the stars, the Bible says the stars shall fall, uh, the sun has turned to dark and the moon turned to blood and the uh, uh, stars fall from the sky. Uh, you know, when Christ is getting ready to return or as he's returning, uh, I don't know if it's as he's returning or right before he returns or as he, the Lord's returning for the rapture and the first righteous judgment on this world, evil, on this evil world. 
this thing started all small and now it is huge and it's being spotted worldwide. We are seeing it in various forms. And so at night you see a bunch of glowing balls. You do not see the dust. In the daytime you can see the dust and from time to time you can see everything. So here it is side by side, Thailand and Ecuador. If you look at Thailand, you can see it's more fiery. The whole thing is ablaze and coming down. And now here it is some other location. I believe this was Jamaica or something like that. Uh, the dust cloud is right there going down on the horizon. And it's, it's right there in our air, man. I mean, we are breathing that right now. And like I said, mass animal die off. The whole nine yards is happening. Sepsis. Now, this guy talking, I don't agree with a lot of what he says. But he does know a lot about that Planet X. He says that's uh, Planet Hell, he always says. And, you know, the Bible does say uh, one riding a, a pale horse or something, uh, he comes and he brings uh, hell follows behind him. Death, uh, he brings death and hell follows behind him. I can't remember how the verses go, but I'm sure you can look that verse up. And I wonder if that verse ain't talking about this planet coming, because like, he says it's planet hell. I don't know. I think hell's in the middle of the earth, I think, and another dimension inside the earth. But uh, he says it's another hell or something. I don't know. I, I on that, take the Lord in prayer. I don't know. But I don't agree with all those things this guy says. But I don't agree with all the things Lopi says. But but he does know what he's, uh, a lot of, I mean, I'm not saying he knows everything about Planet X, but he does know a, a, a lot of information on Planet X. Sepsis and uh, dust pneumonia, and, and it's not even being covered anymore. On he's saying that red, uh, red iron oxide dust from Planet X causes pneumonia and all kinds of sickness, and they don't cover it on news or anything. News, check this out. That is the same thing as that dust cloud. Only you're not seeing the dust, you're seeing the meteorites that's in the tail of the dragon. And so this is still the dragon's tail, believe that or not. And we're going to zoom in to show you that they hot, fiery rocks. That's close. And like I said, you ain't going to never see no little Martian driving that. You ain't going to never see no cherubim or no angel driving it. It ain't no spinning disc. That is a fiery hot ball of, of freaking uh, brimstone. That is going to hit targeted individuals. What is that brimstone going to hit according to Revelation? It is going to hit sinners. Those with iniquities on their back. And I don't care if you don't believe it. Again, there it is again. Zoomed out. Fiery hot rocks. Now I want to show you the space station. And so here it is coming down at the space station. NASA, the governments all around the world know this is coming in and they're preparing for it. I slowed it, no, I sped it up right here, and now it's coming down. Fiery hot rocks, Look brimstone that. is coming down. Look and I guy. want you to see the pattern that this thing takes when we switch. You're going to notice that it's swirling in a particular uh cycle or order you know it's going to let you know that it's the same thing you're seeing worldwide there it is the swirl it's going around in a circle look how many meteorites brimstones hailstones is in the tail of the dragon the dragon's tail is packed millions of miles long it is going to set the earth's foundation on fire just like God said it was. Look at the pattern of this world. We're going to see it right here. Same thing. You didn't have to be at the space station. It's right there in our eyes. We don't see as many meteorites and hailstones and brimstones in this. But look at the pattern of the swirl. Same thing, huh? Something terrible, y'all. And all I'm trying to do is get everybody to the truth. All the lies and deceptions that you've been taught is going to get you into the lake of fire if you don't change. And I think this is Las Vegas, Nevada. Somebody filming this on a telephone. You know, and all I put this on there for, because you could barely see it, 
is the pattern of the swirl that, like you saw at the space station and you just saw in the last footage and if you watch the other footage and you carefully watch it it is going in the same pattern you know this thing is flying overhead and on the horizon every single day worldwide it is supposedly supposed to destroy the whole entire planet in one hour the planet Nibiru or the big huge comet planet whatever it is planet hell is going to go underneath our planet and we're going to get bombarded with that it's missing us right now but it ain't going to keep missing us time is completely up if you don't it may be what destroys the planet in one hour America uh, or destroys America in one hour or you know uh, Bible talks about uh, that um, America being destroyed or New York City being destroyed in one hour but I thought it also could mean nuclear missiles being uh, fired into America destroy America too in one hour by Russia and China and whoever else attacks America stop sending those meteorites are going to target you like it says the fire is going to test your work you do not want to be struck this is wrap the news okay uh, now did you see where Netanyahu uh, won the contest for his leadership party uh, for uh, the leadership of his ruling party or he won the backing of his party but Israel still has no leader as of yet. There's another general election coming up in March 2020, I guess. And guys, this uh, fire, this fire is just unbelievable in, in Australia. Let me see if I can find what to show you on that. If I have any time left, I just want to show you this. It's a hellish As fire the year in ahead Australia. Decade comes to an end, the country is burning. It's been labelled the worst fire Look season it. ever recorded, an apocalypse, a nightmare, and like looking into the gates of hell. Hear that? It's apocalypse. It's been labelled as apocalyptic. Uh, it's uh, it says it's horrible. And look, look, looking into the gates of hell. I think it's a warning from God, Yahweh, and Jesus that uh, if people don't turn from doing their wicked things and don't repent, and uh, that there will be, and that showing them that like like in California, the fires there, like it looked like hell there too. They're showing them that's where they'll be in a place like that, but even worse if they don't turn from their wickedness. And I'm not saying trying to act like I'm any better than anybody else. I'm a I'm a horrible sinner, guys. I'm uh, we all fall short of the glory of God, but we do try to do our best, you know, and try to live the best way we can. And pray about it and ask the Lord if we need to change anything in our walk with the Lord Jesus. And, let us, and pray he tells us if we need to change anything in our walk with the Lord in our lives. and our walk with Jesus or turn from anything. And pray the Lord tells us that. And then when we do sin, we need to repent of our sins, guys. I am I probably sin worse than most of you guys ever thought about in my life. And I really repented for it too. And thank God we got a God that's forgiven. But we do need to repent and ask for his forgiveness. Okay, I want to show you this. Uh, well, I was going to play this, but I ain't got time. This guy actually, a firefighter, uh, need to pray for him and his family and all the people that's been affected by these fires there in California or anywhere else, or the catastrophes. We need to pray for all their families. If anybody that's affected by these catastrophes, and especially ones that lost their uh, homes and everything, pray they find shelter and food and clothing, and pray they, uh, ones, especially the ones that lost their loved ones, pray the Lord comforts them. But this guy was killed by a firefighter in Australia by his truck being turned over. A heavy, heavy fire truck, huge fire truck by a thing called a fire NATO. It, it's a phenomenon that happens when it heats up the atmosphere of these fires so much it causes like a fire NATO. It's a tornado with fire in it. Uh, it's on fire. And it's so powerful it turned over the fire truck on him and killed him. And it showed his family and stuff. They're upset. Pray for his family, guys, if you don't mind. And, uh, and then also, I was wanting to show you this, but I ain't got time, I don't think. Oh, right. Made around 4,000 oh, 4, people are trapped on a beach in Malakuta by a fast-moving fire. Residents of this resort town in the state of Victoria say the smoke was so thick it blocked out the sun and turned oh the morning God. sky pitch black. 
Bushfires continue to burn across the country, but Victoria and New South Wales have been the hardest hit. So let's turn to... So they, uh, people are trapped on the beach, guys, there in, in Australia, and they're uh, even getting, probably getting the water like they did in the other place. It might have been Australia, too, when they done it before because the fire was so bad. People were taking off in boats and everything and had to sleep on the beach and said em embers were coming down on them on fire all night. Uh, 4,000 people were trapped on that beach and couldn't get out because the road was, was uh, all blocked and stuff. So they had to go to the beach like they did on before when that happened somewhere else or might have been Australia. Love you guys. I'll see you either in the air with Lord Jesus or Shitty Terry. I'll see you on my next video.